Hey, Joe from Home Studio Corner. Whether you play acoustic guitar or not, if you have any intention of recording acoustic guitar in your studio, this video is going to help you learn how to make better choices of what you actually record. Remember that song that I produced over there in the bedroom studio? It was a bedroom version of my song Fighter. But if this all points to something bigger. It's actually available on iTunes and Spotify now, so go check it out if you haven't heard it. I recorded three acoustic guitars parts, three acoustic guitar parts in that song, and I touched on it briefly in one of the videos, but I wanted to dive into it a little bit more. A couple things to know about acoustic guitar. Whether you play or not, you need to know some of these things and start to develop the vocabulary of a guitar player. Really, you don't have to be a drummer or an electric guitar player or a piano player to learn the language in order to be able to better produce people who do play those instruments. For example, I'm not a drummer, but I've learned to speak drummer, so when Tim Horsley is sitting over there on the kit, I can say things like, you know what, this one might sound better with a halftime feel. I don't have to go play it for him, he knows what a halftime feel is, and then he'll play it, and it's awesome, and everyone's happy. Same thing with acoustic guitar. You don't have to be an acoustic guitar player, or even be a great player, to produce guitar players well. So someone might come in who's just a crackerjack guitar player, and could play anything, but that person might not be good at recording. They might not be good at coming up with different parts to play, and how to think in that realm, to record maybe two or three different acoustic guitar parts that work well in the recording. That's where you come in. So here's some suggestions of things to try. So the song was in the key, is in the key of C. So the first part that I recorded was just standard tuning. Just kind of a down strum, palm mute, playing in the key of C, no big deal. So that could be it. You could just record that and call it a day. But it's more fun to record more stuff, right? So I knew I wanted to have more than one guitar. And that's where this first part is, is pretty crucial. If you know you want more than one guitar, but it's going to be a pretty acoustic guitar-driven song, chances are you're going to need three and not just two. Here's why. This first guitar starts off the song, so it's most likely going to be panned up the middle. If I add a second guitar, where's it going to go? Okay, let's say it goes left. Well now, I've got a guitar in the middle and a guitar left. It's off balance. If I then take the middle guitar and automate it to pan over to the right, which I've done before, it just doesn't work very well. It sounds weird. We hear this guitar in the middle, and then suddenly it's over to the side. And it just feels weird, and it feels like there's a hole left in the middle. A couple years ago, I started doing this where instead of having the option of, in my mind, it was always either one guitar or two. One up the middle or two pan left and right. There's a magical third option. Three, one of them in each zone. So this one stays in the middle of the entire song and then other guitars come in on the side. Guitar two and guitar three. So that's the first tip. You can actually have three acoustic guitars and it can work really well. Now the player has to be able to play in time or you have to get out your editing chops to make it all mesh together. But as long as the person can keep a consistent tempo, it can sound huge and massive. But you don't want to have the person play three of the same exact thing. You know, double this part and then double it again. So you don't want three tracks going. Sometimes that can work. In my experience, it's more interesting to go with something that sounds different. The easiest way to do that is to use the old capo. Now, some capos don't look like this, but a capo, if you're not familiar with acoustic guitar, it lets me put this and mash down some of the strings here, and then I can play as if the guitar was a lot shorter, which means I can play in that same key, but with a different voicing. So still in the key of C, I've capoed on the fifth fret, now I'm playing in G, but it's actually the key of C. Does that make sense? I'm playing a G chord as far as the, where my fingers go, but I'm actually still playing a C. So now I can play up here. So it's going to sound different. Combine that with this one, it's different. This one's chimier, it's higher, I can play different riffs and different voicings that will complement one another without being the exact same thing laid over the top. So that's one. That's two guitars now. We've got one up the middle playing just normal C, one on the right, capo 5, standard tuning, and then the other one is a different guitar set to open tuning. Now, if you're not familiar with open tuning, this is pretty popular. It's called Dadgad, D-A-D-G-A-D. -A -D -A -D. That's what the strings are tuned to. It's just very open. 
and the lowest note is a D. Well, I needed it to be a C, so I tuned it down a full step. So I took this and just tuned it down a step. Just trust me, I'm not going to do it now. That'll take too much time. But then I played the same thing I was playing there, except in this style, which is going to make me play differently. So the guitar part for that sounded like this. So there was one guitar that's pretty straightforward. The one on the other, one side was up high and kind of jangly, and then this one has this low, low note. It's even lower in the recording, and it has still this kind of open, droney, you know, almost Goo Goo Dolls type sound to it. If I had three of those guitars, it would be the Goo Goo Dolls and wouldn't be the vibe that I was going for. But one of them. Hmm, now that's actually pretty interesting. So that's all great in theory. What does it sound like in the recording? Let me go show you. Okay, I've got the tracks pulled up here. Here's what the whole thing sounds like going into verse three. You knocked me down, left me bleeding on the ground. So here is the first guitar. This is the one in standard tuning. Let's go right to the downbeat. Pretty straightforward. Here's the second one. Different, a little bit higher, a little bit different voicing. Here's the third one in open tuning. So now I'm going to start with the first one, add the other ones in, and you can hear how it creates this really big soundscape that's really interesting, and it's not three of the exact same thing. So it, it, it provides just so much more depth and interest than three copies of the same thing. That would get boring. This actually is pretty interesting. Here we go. So there's a couple of cool things going on here. Obviously the different tunings and voicings, but also the strum patterns of the far left and right guitars are very similar. Jum, ja, jum, ja, jum, ba, jum, ja, jum. And the middle one stays with that choppy downbeat. Junk, 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 junk. So even that causes some difference in separation that makes it even more interesting. These are the types of things, chances are if you have a guitar player coming in, he may not think to do some of this stuff in the recording setup, but he'll easily most likely be able to play this stuff. If you say, hey, that sounds great. Can we do another take with it capoed up? And then he'll think, okay, and he'll find a place that works. And then maybe takes him a second to figure out what the chords are. And then he can play that. He may have never thought of it and it could bring the tracks to life. And if you really want to get crazy, see if he's comfortable with open tuning. And that just gives you another option. Should you do this every time? No, this is just what felt right on the day of the recording. Occasionally, Two guitars playing the exact same thing, pan left and right, can work wonderfully. But it's nice to have some other options, especially if the song is like this, where the song begins with just acoustic guitar for the whole first verse. We want that to stay, that's our anchor. I want that to stay in the middle for the entire song now. We can do that with three guitars because once we add in guitar two and three, they're out left and right. Everything's balanced, everyone supports everyone, and everyone's happy. But something's there. Act like I don't care. So that's it for me. If you like recording tips like this, you'll love my recording cheat sheet. It's for free. Just go to recordingcheatsheet.com. You can download it. It's a PDF. It's free. It'll take you just a few minutes to read. And then if you take just one of the ideas and try them out, you'll probably have better recordings by this weekend. All right, that's it for me. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you around.